Hello, and welcome to the Kitty Cat Lane. My name is Lane, and today I'm going to be going over some tips and fundamentals for how to draw hair and fur. So to start off, let's talk about the foundation. This includes the hairline and where hair and fur grows. A hairline is where the hair on your head and your forehead meet, the place where your hair starts or stops growing. When drawing people, it's important to determine where the hairline is so you don't accidentally make your character look like they have a receding hairline or some other form of hair loss. Hairlines are different from person to person, and if you are drawing an elderly character, it might be a nice touch to let them have a receding or dramatic hairline to emphasize their age. Later, I will demonstrate some common types of hairlines that we see, but for now, we will just use one that's fairly straight across, but still follows the curve of the skull. Speaking of the skull, it's always a good idea to loosely draw the whole head before you start drawing the hair or fur, because if you don't already have the structure for the hair to take form off of, it's pretty easy to accidentally deform the shape or size of the skull. For this demonstration, I showed a common issue that happens when you don't have a determined hairline. When I drew this character's hair, I started way too high up, and now they look like they have a really long forehead. So to fix it, I defined the hairline and pulled the other side of the bangs down a little bit more to make it look more natural. Now for furry characters. With fur, since there's no real hairline, we need to instead consider where the fur grows from. Obviously, it's the skin, right? So something to keep in mind is to make sure that when you draw tufts of fur, it doesn't go past where the skin and base structure would be. You can always layer fur and hair, but for this cartoony look where I just have big spikes to represent the fur as a whole, if I bring it past where the outline of the skull should be, it changes the solidity of the foundation and morphs my character's head shape. It's less likely to happen when you already have the base sketched out, but it's just a small thing that can make a big difference. For this next example, I'll draw a really fluffy dog starting with the fluff. Then after I draw the fluff, I'll define where the skull is. Looking at it, one side is fine, but the other side has no structure and doesn't balance well with the other side. So let's just use that head shape to know where we should make the touch-ups. It's an easy fix. Now I'll do the same with the body. It's so fluffy and cartoony that it kind of doesn't matter where the foundation is, but I'm going to roughly map it out anyway. Just some quick, not super accurate bone guidelines that's just accurate enough to give us an idea of what it looks like under the fluff. This is more so just as like a fact checking kind of thing, making sure that if this character didn't have all this fluff, it would still work. Moving on to part two. How to draw hair and fur at different stages of growth. This includes how the way that the hair grows affects the direction it lays, as well as the way it layers, and obviously, the way it changes in length. This will be especially important if you want to draw a character over a long period of time, like maybe an adventurer who doesn't get to have a haircut very often, or possibly if you want to show a character in different stages and ages of their life, whether that's through a flashback or just in general you're following a character throughout their life. So for this demonstration, I'm going to draw the same character in the process of growing out their hair. It's going to start off buzzed short. We'll talk about texture and thickness of hair next, but for clarity's sake, let's just say that this character has thin to medium hair density, so it's kind of lightweight, but still heavy enough to hold some shape on its own. The buzzed hair is too short to really style, so it just follows the direction of the character's natural hair growth. There are some places where it'll stick up a little on its own, but it generally just sits there. Next, the hair is just long enough to start styling a little. This character defined their hairline a little more since it's long enough to stay in place, and is generally about the same length all around since it was all cut the same length when it was buzzed cut. Gravity is pulling the weight of the hair down for the most part, except for a few straight tufts on the top layer of the head that blow back a little as it catches wind as the character walks. Lastly, the character has finally grown their hair out to about shoulder length. 
now where the character's hair is parted, is where there's the most tension. It's getting held and pulled down by the weight of the rest of the hair that's dangling just around the shoulders. The bangs are a little looser because they've been tucked back like a curtain behind the ear. Now the ear holds most of the weight for that section of hair, allowing a small lift where the root of the bangs meet the hairline. Below, I show the same process but with fur. This time, the fur on the cheeks, ears, and chin get longer and heavier as it grows. You can also see more layers of the fur and hair on this last furry because their fur is growing from all over, so when they pull the hair that's growing from further back more towards the front, the hair from the back of the head looks shorter since it's being pulled from further back and layering on top of the other hair. Try to picture a pom-pom or a fuzzy ball. The fur is all the same length all over, but when you pull it one way or brush it in one direction, since it's being pulled from different distances, it doesn't all reach the same length in one direction. Lastly, it's time to talk about texture. This is where I'll talk more about how you can show the coarseness, or as I like to say, the thickness of hair, as well as how to draw different hair types and styles, and how they affect the weight, which changes the way it looks depending on how it's styled and drawn. I could make a whole video just drawing different types of hair in various haircuts and styles, but for this video I'll just do two examples of three different hair types each with a different hairline. The first example has a more rounded and more receding looking hairline. She'll have thin, silky, straight, light, and wispy hair. The second example has a straight across hairline. She'll have thick, coarse, dense, and heavy hair with semi-tight curls. The last example has a widow's peak type of hairline meaning it comes into a downward point at the middle of the forehead. It's not a super dramatic peak like you'd see on some characters, but it's noticeable enough. She'll have semi-coarse or thick medium hair that's long and wavy or loose curls. I'm going to loosely sketch them all out first, then go back and render them all later. It's important to remember that when drawing hair, not to draw every single strand unless your character has so little hair that you can literally count each strand. Loosely draw sections or segments of the hair that give you an idea of how much hair they have and what length and shape you want it to be. You can then go back and add more strands or details to define it and make it look the way you want it to without spending so much time trying to fill space. So when we're drawing the first type of hair, it's just going to drape down the side of her head. It's very flat and it lays very thin, meaning it's pretty close to the outline of her skull. There's not really any volume, and in terms of weight, it's comparable to a thin veil. The second type of hair has been sectioned off by loosely pulling back the top part with a scrunchie so that it can be styled at the bottom. By just roughly outlining her hair, I tried to imply sections and layers of curls without drawing every single strand. I showed the type of curls by using a swirling spring-like motion, and since her hair is thick, when it's loosely pulled back at the top of her head, the roots appear pretty puffy and don't lay down flat on her head. You'll also notice that there is like a U-shape that the bottom of her hair strands make. That's because her hair is also about the same length all over, and when they're laying on top of each other, since it's so thick and it's the same length, it creates this circle and doesn't lay down straight across at the bottom. For the last type, I basically used a little bit of knowledge from both of the previous hairs to figure out how I needed to do this hair. Her hair is straighter at the top, where it has the most tension, but since it's medium in thickness, it doesn't lay down totally flat on her head. There's a little bit of volume. The further down it goes, the more the curls are able to fan out and take shape. I'll come back to this later, but I used a mental image of a ribbon for parts of her hair. Demonstrations for that and the spring technique will be shown later. 
But now that I have the hair types planned out, I wanted to do a second version of each type with their hair styled a little bit. So we can kind of see the difference between how they might look shortly after they've woken up versus once their hair has actually been styled. For the first example, I imagine this character styled her hair by using a hair dryer and hairspray to fluff up her hair and give it a windblown look to add more volume. The second example tightly braided back the sides and under parts of her hair to give herself a faux hawk type look. And then she let the top of her hair down and fluffed it up a bit. Then the last type parted her hair to the side and flipped it to add more volume at the roots. A side note for that. Because her hair is flipped in the sketch, I show where the hair that was flipped over would look shorter because the way that she had it cut for when her hair was parted at the middle, you get a little bit of layering here. I wanted to point that out and talk about it real quick, just because I ended up covering it up in the rendering process and forgot to show it, so I'm just pointing it out now. To render these, I started off by using a dense watercolor brush for a more smooth painted look. For the silky hair, I gave the styled version lots of highlights and shine. I toned it down for the flat version because I was afraid that her hair would look oily if I added too much highlights, so that's just something that you can keep in mind when drawing your character's hair. For the second and third styles, I start off with the watercolor brush for the top two, but then I switch over to a textured brush for the bottom two. Using highlights, I draw attention to the areas of the hair where the curl is catching the light the most. And then I darkened the parts where it would be the deepest, or obviously where the hair would create a shadow on itself. That's just a way of showing the curls and style of a hair without necessarily giving them outlines. For the hair that has more texture, like coarse or curly hair, you can really bring it to life with a rougher brush. I use the same methods for the bottom two, that I did for the top two, but I switched brushes for the bottom ones, so it has more of a textured look. I use a brush that's sort of like a pastel or crayon mixed with a traditional watercolor look. When you draw hair, or really anything, play around with different brushes and textures and see how using these brushes affects the way your art looks. It can really be a game changer, and also really help you find your style if that's something that you're still trying to figure out. So for some of the techniques I used for the curlier hair, I mentioned the ribbon and spring method earlier. For the looser curls or wavy hair, doodle a ribbon that folds and curls. Then for the spring hair, doodle a tornado or spring. Then for both of them, add more details and touch it up, as well as adding highlights and shadows, and it really makes it look more hair-like. Same goes for the way you draw any hair. Make loose shapes for what you want, then clean it up and add the details. You can also use negative space to your advantage, like the quick little demonstration I did here. You can draw fur using the same methods as the hair, so I just did some simple demonstrations here without rendering them, just to give you a little idea and visual reference for how to transfer these methods over to a furry character. Now let's do a quick review of what we learned. The basics of foundation, like defining the hairline and base of where the fur and hair of a character grows. How hair growth changes the way we draw the direction, layers, and length of hair. And of course, how to render different types of hair with different textures, thickness, and weights. I feel like we really covered a lot in this video. Please let me know if there was anything that you learned or thought was interesting or helpful in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. I always try to respond to questions and give further advice to anyone who needs it, so don't be too shy to ask for help or clarification if there was anything that you didn't really understand or if I didn't fully explain it. Anyway, thank you all so very much for taking a walk down the kitty cat lane with me. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And here's the secret kitty of the day. Bye bye!